has been during our lifetimes in terms of uh, symbology, understanding the roots of the control that is being exerted over this planet and its ever-suffering and marked for extinction, a lot of them, uh, humanity. It's uh, amazing. Talking about, of course, Jordan Maxwell, the one and only. Hello, Jordan. Welcome back. Thanks for well, being here. These you. are crazy times. <laughs> That is absolutely truth. I am just amazed at watching the world that I grew up in completely collapsing around me. Yeah. And uh, yeah. The, the political system that we live by, you know, uh, when I was growing up, I thought this was the most powerful government in the world. You know, when you see all the big buildings of Washington, D.C., with all the beautiful architecture and, and the Capitol building, it was very impressive to a kid. And, uh, you know, it implies that this is a very stable and powerful government that protects you and protects your rights, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So I grew up, you know, in that in that kind of a mindset because I was born in 1940. Mm -hmm. And by 1950, I'm 10 years old, enough now to understand what's going on. And so I lived from 1950 to 1963. That 13-year period was uh, dazzling for me as a kid because there was so much freedom and liberty and justice. and It was a strange and interesting experience for me as a young kid, you know, to live in a, in a free country at the time. Uh, you know, I, that's all I knew, it, it, you know, as a teenager. And then as it began to, right after the assassination of John Kennedy, I began to quietly watch uh, the whole world go to hell on TV. And I started talking about what I was seeing as far back as 1959 and 1960, uh, uh, talking to little small audiences, you know, mom and pop uh, uh, yeah. uh, bookstores yeah, yeah. and yeah. all that kind of thing. Uh, and I was talking about secret societies and fraternal orders and the symbols and emblems of government and banks and insurance companies and how the world works. Because I was just fascinated and ravenous for knowledge and so I was reading and like a reporter I just do all the research and then I'm reporting it but I was doing it as a as a hobby I just love lear learning and teaching other people until uh, about 19 the mid uh, late 80s uh, mm -hmm. you know I, I became involved with uh, large uh, important organizations CBS television and uh, and other you know big organizations wanted me to speak here and there and everywhere, and so then I got into it professionally back in uh, the late eighties and ever since then i 've been talking around the world i 've been traveling and uh, you know i 'm seventy six now and i can 't go anywhere, but there was a time when I was roaming around the earth, giving lectures on secret societies and the political events of the day and all the dark. <clears throat> mysteries going on with banking and mafia and government and underworld organizations and Wall Street. <clears throat> but especially was I always interested in religion. And that was my that was my one subject that I really loved. I mean I it was second nature to me to read and study about the ancient religions. Yeah. Going all the way back to the Hindus and the Egyptians, all that stuff is, you know, fascinating. Jordan, looking at religions in the in the clinical sense, did you at that time? Now, I'm a, I'm fully understanding what you're saying about studying them and their roots and and how they came to be what they are now. But did you look at them as the cold, cruel, ruthless organizations of domination, subjugation, mind control that they really are back then? Uh, you know, like I, I told you that experience I had in the Catholic Church when I was like nine years old. Right, tell the, us again. Yeah, yeah it was. <clears throat> I was about nine years old, ten, uh, and the, and uh, my family were all Catholic, and so about nine or ten years old, they have something called a confirmation uh, service at church. That's right. where little kids are confirmed Catholics. Uh -huh. So they call it confirmation. Well, the day before, the nuns at school told us that tomorrow night at the church at confirmation the the bishop will be here and uh and and after the confirmation service the bishop possibly not for sure but he might after the service is over now that you are confirmed catholic he will ask you if you have any questions and he'll try and answer them for you 
And so the nun said, Hmm. now, if that happens, we Mm -hmm. don't know, but if it does happen, you do not ask any questions, period. You don't ask questions. You just sit quiet. And so the following night after the service was over, Bishop Tulin uh, from Mobile Bishop was there, and, and, uh, and, and he did. He said, uh, now, after, uh, after, now that you're all confirmed Catholic, I'll try and answer your questions if any of your children have any. Well, we all knew we're not supposed to have any. So I stood up, and I raised my hand. I said, yes, I have a question. I said, my father works with uh, t- uh, torches, like a welder. <clears throat> yes. And I said, could I take a torch and burn an angel? If there was an angel standing next to me, could I take a torch and burn him? Would it hurt him? <laughs> and he said, no, no, no. And I said, why not? He said, well, and he said something to the effect that, well, fire is a natural thing. You have to have wood or plastic or paper or something. You get, But you can't burn an angel. <clears throat> and I said, why not? And he said, because an angel is a spirit, and you can't burn a spirit. And I said, well, if you can't burn a spirit, why am I worried about going to hell where my spirit will burn forever if you can't burn a spirit? <laughs> and, and everyone looked at each other like you know, like a, 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 like a, uh, 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 a deer in the headlights. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> and they never wh- thought about it. What did he know? say? And he, uh, he just looked at me kind of strange. And but I remember there was a red-headed priest from Ireland, and he pointed at me and said, "Sit down and shut up." So I just shrugged my shoulders to make a you know, to make a, a point. I shrugged my shoulders like you know, saying, "Like, well, okay, I, I I had a chance, but nobody answered it." And so I sat down. But ever since then, I began to suspect that there was something going on here, and there were lies. So after that, I started dropping Alka-Seltzer in, in the holy water at church. <laughs> and, uh, you know, <laughs> and people coming yeah. in. Well, what a bad what boy you were! Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, and so That's... I, I finally, you know, began to really, uh, begin to really become fascinated with ancient religion. I think my gut feeling at the very beginning, when I was young, I felt that there's some kind of a missing dimension to our history as humans, something yeah. uh, something we haven't been told. Right. And the more I would grow, the, you know, the older I got, the more I would ask uh, my, my, you know, the adults around me, and nobody knew what I was talking about. The other thing that really influenced me was the fact that I used to go to uh, the different churches with my young friends from school. They would, you know, Everybody was going to, with everybody else to their churches. So I went with all my friends to their churches. I tried this church and that church. Every time I was going to the church because I was hoping I was going to hear intellectually stimulating, brilliant uh, information about life, about God, about the history of the world, etc. And all I got was candles and hymns and uh, passing the plate. And I got so frustrated because I would ask questions and nobody knew what I was talking about. So. I ended up just dropping out, and now I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to start studying religion. And so when I was like 12, 14, 13 years old, I really began to think there's something going on here, and religion is not what we have been told. And so it didn't take me long at the ripe old age of 19 <clears throat> to figure out there's something really bad going on here. We've been lied to. And then, and, you know, and that's why when I began to look at the history of the human race, mm-hmm. even back then, it mm-hmm. started to scare me. My God. And then, of course, you know, as I was coming through the years growing up yeah. and finding out that there's artifacts, uh, out of place artifacts, uh, like in South oh, Africa. Michael, Michael down, Cremo. Michael yeah, Cremo's. Work. Exactly. Michael Cremo's. Hidden history, history of the human of, race. That's yeah. it. And then you find out there are handmade artifacts that are so far down in the earth, they're in strata, which is three and a half billion Billion. years old, which means somebody was on this earth three and a half billion years ago making artifacts. And that's not me saying it, that's what the paleontologists and archaeologists are saying. You know, this is far down into the earth, strata, which is three and a half billion years old, and they're finding all kinds of handmade artifacts. So I know now, now I realize why 
the scientists today, archaeologists and paleontologists for the most part, they all poo-poo this whole thing. It's all a bunch of nonsense. And the reason why is very simple. They can't explain it. And if you can't explain it, well, then why the hell would you call yourself a, a, a doctor and an authority if you can't explain the obvious? Obvious, somebody's been on this earth for almost four billion years, and you didn't know anything about it, and you can't explain it, so let's don't even talk about it, because it'll make you look like a fool. So as far as I'm concerned, I've had enough of science. I've had enough of all this doctors and PhDs. I know what's going on here. We've been lied to, and I mean big time. The lies are the lies are in fact what most people accept for reality. That's their reality. And it's It's, you know, and uh, what what was that? Upton Sinclair said a long time ago that it's very difficult to convince someone of of a truth that that their job depends on them not knowing it. uh, So yeah, if you've got a job and you're not supposed to talk about this kind of stuff at work, or you'll be fired. Then people, you know, that's your money. That's your 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 livelihood. So just forget it. Don't even think about it because I'll get fired if I talk about it. Well, me, I didn't care. I've always not cared about my my life in the future. I don't care. I want to know. That's why I said to you before that people who go to church today are are what we call believers. You know, you go to a new church. And people don't know you. They'll ask you, are, mm-hmm. are you a believer? And how are long you have you a, been a isn't believer? That, are, in other words, are you brainwashed? Are you MK Ultra? Are you mind-controlled? <laughs> are you a believer? Right. Yeah, have you believer. given up the right to honest, open inquiry about this planet, your life, and what you're doing here? Yeah, have you given yeah. it up? Are you a believer? Have you yeah. found the truth? Have you stopped the search for reality? Right. Now, and I am now looking at the theology for some 45 years. I know what's going on. I know how this stuff works. I know where they all came from. I know what the symbols mean. I know what the words mean. Uh, but now I find myself in a country and in a world at this time where most people don't want to hear the truth. You know, like uh, Jack Nicholson said, yeah, yeah, I, you can't handle the truth. The, the no, real and, truth and the, the more pressure and stress they're under, Jordan, the less they want to deal with the truth. That's exactly right. And so... I realize now the whole human race has been lied to, deceived by people who are extraordinarily bright, very intelligent people who are equally as evil and demonic, but they're brilliant. And they have manipulated the whole human race into believing stuff which is just not true. But I am of the opinion that very soon the entire superstructure, especially of Western Christian civilization, is crumbling. It's falling apart. The whole thing was built on a house of cards of lies, religion, government, words, terms, symbols, coats of arms, halotry. It's all a man-made system of gang warfare. And the gang, you know, one gang's bigger than the other gang. And you got the Republican gang, and they're against the Democratic gang, and the Communist gang against the Nazi gang. It's all gang wars, all nothing but money yeah. and power. And depending upon which club you're in, which gang you're in, you will progress or you will re- be retarded. That's exactly uh, right. It's that's all a lie. It's, see, that's the whole thing. It's a complete construct of fiction, and it, exactly it, it's, right. it's reality. So uh, whatever reality is anymore, uh, yep. it's, it's hard to call it the truth because it's a lie. But the lie well, yeah. is reality. And what about uh, and what about what George Carlin said? You know, it's a big club, and you ain't in it. <laughs> once you become, what a wonderful you man! Become, God, how did we oh, lose God, these yeah. people? Jeez. Yeah. And he talked about he talked about uh, God's uh, God's will and the, and the divine plan, and uh, and he said, well, suppose what you want is not in God's divine plan. So now, what are you going to do? Uh, you know, and so, uh, the whole the uh, whole thing, he he went off on a religion. By the way, but, uh, uh, good news about Carlin. They they uh, have found uh, about an hour routine he did shortly before he died. I think within a year before he died. No, it was it was right after 9-11. That's what it was. And he was talking about dead people and uh, give me dead people. I like to, something. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah and said, that has to, just I been. I go to the auto races. I want going, to see some action. They're going to release that for the first time. 
when, I don't know, but it's going to be released a whole nother hour plus of George Carlin at the height of his powers. Well, yeah, I know. He was sensational. Yeah. But like I said, after 45 years of studying day in and day out theology, because it's my love, I love it. I mean, I've dedicated my life to it. I am telling you, it's what I what I'm seeing now by my work of of studying theology. It's like pulling a string on an old sweater, and before you know it, you you have pulled the wrong string, uh-huh, and you're now uh-huh. dissembling. Yep. the whole sweater is falling. It's a apart. very good visual image. Yeah. Yep. So that's where we are now. I'm telling you, uh, I'm just amazed at, at the at the, the the lies and the deception, which are now all over. It's provable, but nobody can handle it. Nobody wants to look at it. I mean, we're told that the Jews are God's chosen people, and then you find out all you need to do is learn how to read. Go to school and learn how to read, and go to a library and get a book on Jewish history, and you will find all over the world people know, the people who study these kind of things, Right. Or know that the Jewish religion is Hinduism. It came from the Hindus. Mm-hmm. It's a Hindu religion. Mm-hmm. But that's okay because of uh, Christianity and Islam come from Hindu come from the Hindus. And the Sanskrit uh, uh you know prophecies, etc. All of this is very, very ancient and it's all kept secret by a priesthoods, by secret societies, fraternal orders. Uh, you know, if you're in, then you're in the club. And if, if it's a big club, and if you ain't in it, then you don't know from nothing. And so I now know what's going on. I now know how this government works. I know that there are two different governments in America today. Most people have never heard of such a thing. Uh, I mean, it's extraordinary how much people do not know about the world they're living in. And so... I don't know. I just, I'm just at a wit's well, end. Well, you, you've carried the, Jordan. You've carried the burden of knowledge, wisdom, and awareness better than most anyone, and you've shared it so well. And and in case you don't know, Jordan is uploading or has uploaded virtually all of his his work, his research, and you can get into it for a one time lifetime membership fee. It's it's online. Tell us more about that. This is yeah. Huge. It's only for thirty dollars one time, thirty dollars uh, contribution. The reason why, and uh, I haven't even begun to. I mean, I got tons of stuff on there now, but I got terabytes, thousands of gigs, terabytes of documents and pictures on all kinds of strange things that are going on in the world and government and banking, police departments, and how the you know how the whole world system really works. I've got terabytes of stuff to put on yet. So my webmaster is working around the clock trying to dump all that stuff onto my website. But what it is, is if you go to my, my podcast, which is Jordan Maxwell's show, and that's very important. If you come to me, it's Jordan yeah. Maxwell's show dot com. That's my website. And uh, and you go on Jordan Maxwell's show and then you will see a a, a banner, a little button that says uh, Research Society, Jordan Maxwell Research Society. All that is is a new website connected to the Jordan Maxwell Show. It's a new website in which I am dumping down, like you said, I am I am releasing all of my research uh, little by little every day. We're, we're putting new stuff on. New Fascinating! What a what an archive! Wow! Yeah. And so it's only and see so, uh, I and and I, I'm amazed that. Other companies are charging like three or four hundred dollars a year, or some yeah, of them oh, fifty dollars sure. a month. Yeah, mine is only thirty dollars for a lifetime subscription. And the reason why I'm doing that is two reasons. Uh, the reason why I'm only charging one price for a lifetime subscription, but I'm charging something, is because I'm tired of giving to the world my work, and and people using my work and people seeing my work, but I don't get anything from it. People stealing your work, Jordan, no. Jordan, they have stolen from you. You're entitled to have a little bit of an income to make your life a little more tolerable, for God's sakes. Don't well, that's, apologize that's, to it. Well, that's exactly what I feel. And besides, i got to pay my webmaster. He's, he's, he is a top-of-the-line, number-one-kind webmaster 
who was really a dear friend, who was working behind the scenes continually to help me. I, ha I, I feel obligated to pay him something, and I don't have anything. 